Transcription is the first step in the process known as protein synthesis, the way that a cell takes a set of instructions in its DNA, known as a gene, and uses that set of instructions to build a protein so that it can carry out a particular function or make a structure for the cell. Now, again, transcription is how do you copy that one gene into a form known as M or messenger RNA so that the ribosome can then build it without damaging the DNA in the nucleus. Well, the process begins using this concept known as codons. Now, DNA is written in bases, A's, T's, C's, and G's, but amino acids, there's 20 different versions of them, so you can't just use A to represent alanine, T to represent thymine, and so on, because you just run out of bases. So instead, you use them in groups of three. Let's take a quick look at this codon chart over here. And here you can see the various different kinds of codons. And so you can see that, say, for example, UCU stands for serine, while CCU stands for proline. And this is how the ribosomes take the messenger RNA, which is just a long sequence of A's, T's, or sorry, A's, U's, G's, and C's, and uses them to determine what amino acids to use. Now, Part of the important process here is something known as a promoter. That's the indicator to, a, the, to the enzymes that are going to do transcription. Where does a gene begin? Kind of like when you're flipping through a recipe book, you'll see a picture of the food and a title. And that tells you, ah, there's a recipe starting here. Or when you're looking through your biology textbook, you flip and you see, ooh, the big picture and the big words that indicates the beginning of a chapter. I should begin taking my notes here. So, the first step is when the DNA helix gets opened, then the RNA polymerase, an enzyme that builds RNA, will come along. And it follows the standard base pairing rules of wherever you see a guanine, you put a cytosine, wherever you see a cytosine, you put a guanine. It does get a little bit tricky when you're talking about A's and T's because RNA does not use T, thymine. It instead uses uracil. So if I was an RNA polymerase and I was coming along here, and I see the DNA sequence here, where I put, say, C and A, I'll put U, uracil. Where I see a G, I put a C. Where I see a T, I put an A. C, I put a G. C, I put a G. A, I put a U. A, I put a U. T, I put an A. C, I put a G. G, I put a C. See? Pretty simple. All right. Now, the last thing that'll happen is once the RNA sequence has been put together, before it leaves the nucleus, if you're talking about a eukaryote, it needs to undergo some editing. Um, in eukaryotic DNA, yours and mine, and plants and fungi, you'll have these things called introns or intervening regions of DNA that does not get used to build the protein. Instead, that gets edited out, leaving just the sequences that will be expressed, the expressed regions, otherwise known as exons. So you clip out the introns, and splice together the exons. And then finally, you put on something called the five prime cap. Don't worry about that, it just protects it from uh, enzymes. And then on the tail end of it, you pull it in on a long sequence of adenines, otherwise known as a poly A tail. Now, let me go over this whole process again by taking a look at this YouTube video. So we'll go ahead and we'll go to YouTube, and we'll go ahead and make this nice and big. So here we see the DNA and the enzyme is going along. It's landed on the promoter and saying, aha, 20 to 30 odd bases along, I shall find the gene. And then it finds the gene and it starts to unwind and open up the helix. Now we only need to copy off one side of the DNA double helix. That's called the coding strand. And so here's a raw RNA nucleotide, shtunk, shtunk, shtunk. The RNA polymerase is now joining all these RNA nucleotides together to form our messenger RNA molecule. And it keeps going along, shtunk, 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 adding more and more and more. We can see in the background a few others being made. This is the non-coding strand, so it doesn't get copied. So we're just making off our messenger RNA strand here using the RNA polymerase, and the RNA polymerase just keeps going until it reaches a sequence of A's, T's, C's, and G's that indicates you should end, sometimes called a termination sequence. And we're done. So we'll go ahead and stop it here, and we can see that's our messenger RNA. It can now leave the cell and go off to the ribosomes to end protein synthesis through the process known as translation.